let's say that we have a variable x. I'm assuming it's continuous here, so it has probability density function f of x. And this depends on at least one parameter. So maybe it's just one parameter, theta 1. Maybe it's a theta 1, theta 2. Or maybe it's many parameters. But if I take a set of observations of x, x1, x2, x3, up to xn, then I can define the likelihood function for that sample. So this is written as L of x given theta, so the likelihood of observing each observation if I knew the true values of the parameters. And this is the product of the probability density of observing x1 if I knew the parameters multiplied by the probability density of observing x2 if I knew the parameters. And so I can write this in this capital pi notation. So the multiplicative equivalent of the capital sigma for summations. So I just take the product of the probability densities of each observation if I knew the true parameters. So although I've defined this for continuous ones with a probability density function, maybe even a little bit more intuitive for discrete, where I just multiply the probability masses for each observation if I knew the true parameters. Now this gives us another method of estimation. So I can use this likelihood function to estimate these parameters. And the maximum likelihood estimator, which I'm going to call theta hat of the set of parameters theta, is just the set of parameters which maximize the likelihood function. So it doesn't tell me these are the most likely parameters. What it does tell me is that for this observe set of observations I have, the parameters that made these observations most probable were whatever the estimates are. So it's a very subtle point, but it's one a lot of people get wrong. They hear maximum likelihood and they think, oh, these are the most likely values for, for the parameters. No, the parameter values are what they are. I don't know them, but I can say if I can estimate, if I estimate them to be these, these choice of parameter estimates best describes what I've seen, makes what I have seen most probable. Now, whenever I hear maximization, I think of finding a turning point in a graph, differentiation. And for that very reason, we don't usually work with likelihood functions. We usually take the log first. And this gives us the log likelihood function, which I tend to write with this lowercase sort of copper plate fancy curly L. And this is just the natural logarithm of the likelihood function. Now this happens for a couple of reasons. We do this for a couple of reasons. Partly because it's a one-to-one -one function. If I have two values, a is greater than b, then log a is greater than log b. It's one-to-one, -one, and so a bigger a means a bigger log a. So what it does mean is that the maximum value for the so the parameters which maximize the likelihood function are also the parameters that maximize the log likelihood function. So the main reason that we do this is, well, partly it doesn't change the problem of parameter estimation, but differentiating a product of functions I'm sure you've seen the product rule for derivatives. It's a lot harder than the than the, than summing derivatives. 
even if I've just got one parameter and n observations, if I want to differentiate that with respect to the parameter, because the parameter theta is what I'm trying to fix to choose my estimate of that to maximize this function. Yeah, sure, I could do that without taking the logs. But then if I take the derivative of a product, I've got to pick each term out one at a time to differentiate, leave the remaining n minus 1 terms in the product, and then sum that over each of the n terms I could have picked out. Yeah, I could do that, but that is absolutely horrid. There's a reason why, in general, we don't want to be differentiating products of functions if we can avoid it. Whereas logarithms, of course, turn a product into a sum, that the logarithm of a product is a sum of the logarithms. So when we take the logarithm of the likelihood function, then what I get to is the log likelihood. Now, when I need to differentiate this, compared to differentiating via that horrendous product rule, this becomes way simpler because differentiating a product is difficult and messy. Differentiating a sum is easy because the derivative of a sum is just the sum of the derivatives of each term. So if I want to differentiate the log likelihood, well, I just uh, differentiate the log of each term that contributes to that likelihood and sum those up. Now, that is a lot tidier than the statement that we had on the previous slide.